So let's formulate this result. Function f measurable if and only if for any, for all borrow sets, its pullback is inside sigma algebra f. Once again, uh, assume we have some set x and sigma algebra f on this set. This is measurable space. This is measurable space. And uh, function f is measurable means that for any interval, its pullback is inside this sigma algebra. This is the definition of function f is being measurable, or we call it f measurable, because pullback of any interval is inside this f. This is a very important criterion, and uh, to show this result, it's easy to see that proof to, to this side is obvious, because if we have this, or for any, Borel set, its pullback is inside sigma algebra. It means that, in particular, it is true. It is true for all for all intervals. Why? Because since intervals are Borel sets. Borel sets. Or once again, any Borel set, for any Borel set, its pullback is inside F. But any interval is a Borel set. That's why for any interval, its pullback will be in F. And this is the definition of F being F measurable. So to one side, to left side, proof is obvious. To another side, and this is easy to prove but not obvious. So to this side, to this side, we assume that our function is f measurable. So our function if f measurable is f measurable. Let's define the set G. And this set G consists of all Borel sets. All Borel sets such that pullback, pullback of these Borel sets is inside sigma algebra f. Once again, G is a set, set of Borel sets such that its pullback is inside F. Let's show, we have to show, we have to show that all Borel sets or Borel sigma algebra, Borel sigma algebra is inside this G. And if we show that, the proof is over. Why? Because look, G contains in itself all B such that its pullback is inside F. But when Borel set is inside G, it means that for any for any Borel set, its pullback will be inside F. Let's repeat it again. G contains of Borel sets such that its pullback is inside F. Borel sigma algebra inside our set G means that for any for any B it will be true. But if for any B this is true, it means that for any for any Borel set, its pullback will be in F. So we have to prove that, first of all, G is sigma algebra, and the uh, Borel sigma algebra is inside this G. So first, let's prove that G is sigma algebra. The first step, it's obvious that empty set is inside G. Next, if A is inside G, in other words, pullback of A is in F, because by definition of G, by definition of G, consists of B such that it's pullback in F. So if A is in G, it means that it's pullback is in F. So assume A in G. Is it true that complement of A is in G? Complement of A is in G means that pullback of this complement is in F. But from previous lessons, we know that pullback of complement is complement of pullback. And this is in F, because this in F. Look, F minus 1A is in F. So this is in F, and its complement also must be in F. That's why this is true. In other words, complement of A is in G. We proved that if A is in G, 
its complement is also in sigma algebra G. And the third part of definition, we want to prove that G is really sigma algebra. Assume A and B is inside G. Is it true that its union, A unioned by B, is inside G? Is it true? Is it true? So A and B is inside G, by definition, means that pullback of A is inside F, and pullback of B is inside F. So once again, we assume that A and B are elements of G. Is it true that union of A and B is inside G? A and B, union of A and B inside G means that pullback of A union B is inside F, by definition. But once again, we know that pullback of union is union of pullbacks. Union of pullback is pullback of unions. Uh, we know this from previous lessons, so watch our previous lesson. And since, and since this is inside F because of this, and this is also inside F because of this, its union is also inside F. So this is inside F. But this is this, and this is true. So A union by B is inside G. So we proved all three parts of our definition. Empty set is inside G. If A is inside G, then complement of A is inside G. If A and B are in G, then union of A and B are in G. So our G is sigma algebra. G is sigma algebra. Uh, this is sigma algebra, and it contains in itself all intervals by definition. It consists of all Borel sets, and interval is Borel set. It consists of Borel sets such that its pullback is in F. In particular, it consists of all intervals such that its pullback is in F. And this is sigma algebra. But we know that Borel sigma algebra is the smallest, by definition, smallest sigma algebra. That's why, since G is sigma algebra, it must contain in itself B, Borel sigma algebra. So the proof is over, and we proved that our sigma algebra G contains in itself Borel sigma algebra. And this finishes our proof. Once again, let's formulate our main result. Uh, function f is measurable if and only if, for any Borel set, its pullback is inside f. So it can be, it can be used as a definition of function f being f measurable. Next, uh, let's define what is Borel measurable function. Assume we have, instead of measurable space, where we take some set X and uh, some sigma algebra on this X, assume instead of the set X, we take real numbers R, and instead of sigma algebra F, we take Borel sigma algebra on this real line. This is one particular case of measurable space. And if we assume some measurable function on this measurable space, it will be called Borel measurable function. So Borel measurable function, by definition, for any interval, for any interval a, b, its pullback will be inside sigma algebra, but we have this Borel algebra instead of our sigma algebra f. So it will be inside an element of Borel sigma algebra. And this is definition. This is definition of f is Borel, Borel measurable. Next, uh, we have to say that every every continuous function every continuous function is Borel function. This Borel measurable function often is called just Borel function. Borel function. It's obvious because function is continuous if and only if it lifts lifts open sets to open sets. Or in other words, pullback of open set is an open set. And that's why every continuous function is Borel function. And class of Borel function is very wide. And in particular, we have to say that for any Borel function G, composition of G and F, composition of two functions where G is Borel, let's write it, G is Borel function, 
And function f is measurable. Function f is measurable. In this case, composition of borrow and measurable function is measurable. It's actually obvious why, because um, function f, function f, let's write it more rigorous, in rigorous form. Assume g is borrow function, borrow function, and f is uh, measurable, measurable function. Then composition of g and f is measurable. To prove it, um, function f is measurable by definition from previous result. It means that for any Borel set, for any Borel set, its pullback is inside f. We proved this result earlier. And is it true that for any Borel set, pullback of this function, g, composition of g and f, minus 1 and b is inside f. So is it inside f? If we prove this, it means that this function, composition of g and f, is measurable function. Let's draw a picture. Um, if we have composition of two functions, g composition with f means that first function f works, and then from this result of function f, then works another function g. Uh, that's why, that's why this is equal, this is equal to g minus 1 of b and then f minus 1. Obviously, obviously, since g is Borel function, a pullback of any Borel set is inside Borel algebra by definition. And since uh, this is inside Borel algebra, its pullback, by definition, this, is inside f. Why? Because this function is measurable. So all of this, all of this, is inside f. In other words, this is inside f. So we proved that pullback of any Borel function, for this function, g composed by f, is inside sigma algebra f. So we proved our result. Let's Repeat it again, um, if g is Borel function and f is measurable, then composition g and f is measurable. This result will be very heavily used for uh, integrals when we define Lebesgue integral. Thank you for your attention.